Fans Club luncheon. So Raving Fans Club is very special. This is our for exclusive only for our clients, people like you who send multiple, multiple referrals to us. So today it's more like a report as to what have we accomplished this year in the past 12 months. So this year in the past 12 months, our team, because of your referral, because of your business, for every person that you refer to our team, we take a portion of our income. This year, uh, we raised over $100,000 to help kids at Children's Hospital in Los Angeles. So thank you, because of your business, we can do that. But then today, uh, from World Harvest, not, I was born in Indonesia, many, uh, like I was talking with Jeff just now, there's a lot more people outside this, uh, this, I believe we live in the best country on planet Earth, right? But then uh, there's a lot of people that really truly need, uh, for example, education, medical, those really, really rare. So we partner up with uh, organization World Harvest over a decade ago, over 10 years ago to the commitment is basically for every person that refer a business to our team, we take a portion of our income, not only to help kids, at Children's Hospital in Los Angeles, but we take a portion of our income to help kids uh, in places like in Indonesia, in uh, Nepal, Pakistan, uh, India, and stuff like that, because the whole world, right? We believe that we are not created, like this whole world is not just for you, right? We believe here at Your Home Soul Guaranteed Realty that your business, your business is designed for others. That's what it is, your business is designed for others. One of our core philosophy, which is in our book, our core values book, is that the size of the hole, the size of the hole that you give through is proportional to the size of the hole that you receive through. So how do we apply it in our business, in our daily life? So I just want to share with you guys, because you guys are very special people. Many of you, for many, many, many years, has been referring multiple business to us. So I just want you to know, yes, we thank you, we appreciate it, but just so you know, that business... You literally change the world. You literally impacting the lives of thousands of kids, not only here in LA, but globally. So today we want to do a quick presentation uh, about uh, what you have accomplished, uh, what you have done through your business uh, with, uh, with our partnership here with World Harvest, uh, all the way from Tanzania. <laughs> so so the, the, the vice president, the co-founder of World Harvest, uh, Dr. Daniel Hanavi, just came back from Africa last, uh, was Two nights, ago. two nights ago, so he quickly ran here because uh, nothing more important than look at these are not our rating, this is not just normal clients. These are people that send multiple referrals to our business and we never grab them money. You know what it means? We never say something like, Hey, you send us a referral and then we give them. not once. So they literally refer because they truly believe that this is the best place to buy and sell real estate in California. But then I want them to know that, hey, your referral actually changed people's lives, literally, right? So these are special, and the real estate agents that are here, part of our team, hey, uh, if you're part of our team, can you stand up and be recognized? Because these are special people. Uh, I want to share with you why they're special. If you're part of our team, can you please stand up uh, so uh, we can see you? Stella, Linda, Edward, Karen, and we may, we may stand in. Uh, Jay, the reason, the reason I said they're special is this. Every time they close escrow, a portion of their income, think about it, these are 100% sales commission position people, right? And, uh, and then they take a portion of their income at the close of escrow. They take a portion of their income to actually help kids at the children's hospital as well as building kids in uh, building hospital, uh, helping kids over the world. And these people are specialists because of that. You guys, I believe, in the second mile service. Do you know why the client sending us multiple businesses? is because of you. Think about it. So in one of our core values, one of our core values, we believe what's called a second mile service. The way second mile service works is that when the clients hire us to buy or sell a house, it's your job, right, Karen, to actually get the home sold. So there's nothing special about it. The client, Sue, Right? Sue will not, will not send you their referrals if all you do, Karen, just close escrow. You know why? Because that's our job. The, believe it or not, the clients actually expect us to get the home sold. It's not a surprise. But you did something more than that. You know what did? Uh, so many of you have great story. Uh, your agent actually uh, responding to you in the middle of the night. 
uh, our clients just now, what you were just telling, you were on, in, on vacation in Cancun. Well, the whole transaction was closed. And your daughter in Seattle says, hey, can I find somebody like Linda here? <laughs> well, you cannot. They have to move here. <laughs> these are, so they're not, we are not just, so these are people who believe in second mile service. Second mile service, there's a story. Uh, and I want to end with this before I'm passing out here. Uh, one of our core values is second mile service. 2,000 years ago, I'm not sure if you know, 2,000 years ago, if you study history, right? There's this thing, uh, so uh, the, the Roman was uh, conquering the world, right? So the Roman Empire. So if you're a Jew, back in the Roman years, do you realize there was a law, and if I'm a Roman soldier, Linda, and you are a Jew, and I met you in the middle of the road, by law, you actually have to drop whatever you do, and you have to carry my stuff for one mile. That's why you notice on the highway, like on the road back then, they put markers, mileage markers. You know why they put the markers? Is for that. So you, as the Jew, you know you have to carry my stuff for one mile. That's the law. You got it? So when we talk about the second mile surface, we are talking about when the law, right? The, when the law requires us to do one mile, you go the extra mile, the second mile. That's why I call it the second mile surface. So when the clients hire us to buy and sell homes, well, what is the second mile surface? Because getting the home sold is the first mile. It's our job, right? It's not a surprise. The client's like, yeah, duh. Of course you have to get my home sold. That's your job. Right now, the second mile, the reason you guys are special, the one that's standing here, because you are not just doing the job, you truly is a living example, because then, the, you know how? Because the clients was just raving about you. Just now, I was just standing there, every single one of you say, oh my gosh, right? Oh my gosh, I was in Cancun, and the whole transaction closed. Oh my gosh, I was buying and selling multiple transactions. Uh, what did you say, Sue, just now? I can sleep, what, what did you say? I can uh, sleep peacefully at night. Sign the guarantee yes. for the Rudy's uh, contract, and I think, oh, I don't worry about that. I just uh, go to sleep. You can sleep. <laughs> you can go to sleep at night peacefully because of the guarantee sale program that Karen shared with you. And many of you have many, many, many stories like that. So I want to thank you for your trust. Thank you for your business. Thank you for your referrals. And uh, I just want to share with you that. Your referrals go beyond the, the beyond your family. You literally change kids' life, and you're gonna hear a special presentation all the way from uh, World Harvest how you change uh, kids' life globally. Thank you. Oh, sorry, sorry. Hold on, hold on. Because we're gonna need your audio. We don't have a mic here. You know what? They, because we actually want to take a mic, but then the mic is gonna cost two hundred fifty dollars. We, de we decided. Well, maybe the two hundred fifty dollars. Maybe we can use it to help one more kid, right? Because how much is to have a kid? Like thirty dollars a month. Put it here. You can hold it. Uh, thank you. Maybe it's cheaper to hold it. <laughs> well, I thank you so much for having me here. Yeah, I just got back from Tanzania, East Africa. I'm here to represent so many smiles and so many thank yous that I receive on your behalf uh, for you. what uh, you're doing in East Africa. Uh, we have uh, probably about uh, 300 children there that got sponsored. They can go to school. Uh, without education, uh, they're really stuck in a cycle of poverty. And it's amazing, isn't it, that uh, as a uh, not, I, I'm not saying simple, but as a uh, regular thing here, buying and selling home here in the United States, uh, you're actually changing communities in the world. And we're, uh, we've been privileged to partner with uh, Rudy for many, many years, transforming communities, uh, not just the children, but also their families in Indonesia, in Nepal, in Pakistan, in India, in Africa, many other places in the world. So I just want to show you quickly uh, what you have accomplished. We focus on education. So, uh, so uh, community services uh, that we do uh, focus on education because we realize quickly that uh, you cannot solve <laughs> the world's problem uh, uh, adequately. So we focus on the next generation. If we, if we educate the children, they will have a different future, and their children's children will have a different future. So we transform communities through education and community services. And um, here are some pictures. These are pictures that we take. 
So now, uh, you go to Sierra Leone, you go to the Freetown, the capital, you'll, s you'll see an inordinate amount of people on the streets with half an arm, a quarter of an arm, half a leg, because uh, during that time, more than uh, 30 or 40,000 children survived. Hundreds of thousands died, but they were amputated. Just because the new government's campaign slogan was, the future was, the future is in your hand. So, the rebel said, if it's in your hand, let me remove your hand, because it, it, it's just so crazy. So now we have a whole bunch of people with, that are amputated. Um, so what we do over there, this is an example of community building that we do. We started a, a professional amputee soccer club. And we have right now about 350 members of people that have, have a leg <laughs> and that we taught to play soccer. So it is incredible uh, how these people with one leg and two crutches can move so much faster than me, for sure, playing soccer. And of course, it's a happy game, so it takes their minds off their, the tragedy that has befallen them. And uh, it's a great spe spectacle uh, because people love to watch them. And we go around the country promoting peace, tolerance, nonviolence, Non, uh, 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 we don't do thing, these things back to our enemies. We love our enemies, things like that. And also now we're using our foot, uh, amputee soccer tournaments to promote education about Ebola. So that's just a little sampling of what community, what kind of community buildings that we are doing all over the world. So, next slide. Okay. So. Education is really important. Quality education gives us the ability to fight the war on sickness and poverty. Next slide. So this is our cornerstone program called Sponsor a Child. Why do we do these things? Let me give you just an example of some statistics. 93% of Nepali youth are not able to complete primary school. 62% of Pakistani children over the age of 10 have never attended school. Why is this important? Do you know that the Taliban uh, recruited from the uneducated and the poor kids? Let me just give you a real example that we have in our church in Islamabad, Pakistan. We have living in our church two kids uh, that we took in about four years ago. They were 10 years old at that time. When they came to church, they were wearing bomb vests. Now, one of our church, uh, most of our church ushers were trained in the military, were military people, so they were able to defuse the, the bomb vest. Two kids, 10 years old. Their parents told them that this is a new kind of bomb vest that only explodes that way, and so they will not be harmed. But these kids are not stupid, they're 10 years old, they know, and they were so scared. And it just amazes me how, how terrorism like this spread among the people that are so uneducated and so ignorant. That's why education is very important. And um, by the way, those kids are fine now. I mean, they live in the church, and um, 
but we're still we're still fighting these things and our church has a big a wall with a guard tower with a sniper you know and uh, the, all the ushers have uh, AK-47s and that my whenever I go with my pastor he always brings his AK-47 when I preach I have snipers all around the, the place and things, things 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 are still like that in Pakistan but we're making a difference we have actually a, a school there that some of the children are sponsored by you uh, in a city called Hassan Abdal outside of Islamabad. It's a bunch of Hindu people that are being persecuted by the Muslims. So we open up a school for these Hindu kids. So it's a, I'm a Christian, but I will open a Hindu school. It doesn't matter to me. This is humanity. I think everybody's right should be upheld. So we have a school, about 100, 121 children are there. And I was there just a few months ago. 30% uh, of youth, eight, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the previous slide. 30% uh, of youth in Sierra Leone have no education at all. 79% of children in Papua are not able to gain access to elementary education. Next. In Sierra Leone, only 5% of all youths made it to primary school. Just 3% to secondary school. Next. So these are the areas where we serve. In Indonesia, we're in Papua, in Aceh, in Bima, Java, no. we are in Nepal, India, Pakistan, Uganda, Rwanda, Sierra Leone. This is uh, the areas that we are serving. Next. Yep, we rise by lifting others. How, let me explain how your one dollar help fight disparity. Next. The cost to send one child to public school in the U.S. is about 650 a month. The cost to send one child to private school in the U.S.A. 1,085 a month. The cost to send one child to school through wool harvest in Indonesia is 30 dollars a month. As you can see, your dollar has a big impact in these countries. Americans spend 1,100 on prescription drugs annually. In India, 30 dollars covers entire cost of healthcare, including prescription drugs. I kid you not, I was hospitalized once in Calcutta. I don't think I want to do that again. <laughs> but I must say, I did get good uh, uh, care in that hospital in, in Calcutta. I stayed there one whole day, and the bill came out to $3.65. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I, I was in Tanzania just a couple of days ago. I was in the hospital also. With, I don't know why I keep going to these hospitals, maybe just to really experience, <laughs> I don't know, but uh, it's uh, the whole, you know, I had an ear thing that happened there. So it, it costs about $15, the whole doctor, ENT specialist with a, with a, with a scope and the whole thing. It was, it's really a bargain. I mean, I, we may start a new uh, medical tourism. <laughs> The average cost of inpatient stay in Nepal is $13 a day. Here, it's 2680 a day. You can help a lot of people over there. Now, good health and good sense are two of life's greatest blessings. That's true. Without health, people cannot even work. Nice. So, I just want to give thanks to your home soul, guaranteed realty. Uh, this is what you have done. And uh, in the next few slides, I'll show you actual pictures of your actual kids and your actual projects that you have done. Next. These are the actual uh, pictures of the kids that you have been uh, helping all throughout the years with us. So medical camp in Nepal. Uh, we, we were helping uh, there's a mon the highest monast Buddhist monastery in the Himalayas. Uh, all the monks there, never, never seen a doctor, never seen a dentist. So we brought doctor and dentist, and we treat all these monks, uh, hundreds of them, uh, Tibetan Buddhist monks up in the Himalayas, the highest monastery in Nepal. And the feeding programs, South Sudan, and all that. Next.
So these are these are the actual children that some of the actual children that you have sponsored. Next. These are the medical and dental camps that we have we have held for you. Actually, Fanny and Rudy has served in the clinics also. And right. any one of us, any one of you guys, if you are welcome, uh, you are welcome to join this. And that is correct. Can you keep the schedule so people know about it? Yeah, every summer, actually in Ju in, Ju in in July, we we go to Indonesia and do all these things. So if you are thinking about something to do this, this next summer, <laughs> come with us. Yeah. And all you need to do, you're just responsible for your own flight, and that's not that's really cheap. How much is it? Like a thousand dollars. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. That's right. Next. <laughs> the last medical camp we had, uh, Fanny was the dispensary, so she was serving in the pharmacy, uh, Fanny, and um, it was really funny because she gave the medication to the person, and the person looks very concerned and keep asking, "Are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, uh, just take this three times a day," she said. And, this, this time of day, she was holding an eyedropper. You know, so, uh, uh, we, we, we pray for those things, but normally we have professionals. So maybe, maybe you stick to feeding program. Uh, <laughs> the feeding programs in India, we, we have been doing it for many years now. Uh, in South India. Thanks. So in Indonesia, a few places. Well, really, this we wrote this. We're really thinking of you together. We are warriors of the oppressed and protectors of the abandoned. Would you please give yourself a clap? And I just want to thank you once again from Wood Harvest. Thank you for partnering with us in this world. One little child at a time. Yeah. God bless you.